Hello viewers, welcome to another special edition of our program, Niger Delta Chatroom. We will talk peace and development for the Nigerian nation, the Asian nation, and the Niger Delta at large. I'm Mitchell Dow Biminatams Okumbre. And today on the show, to talk peace and development in the Niger Delta, I have a proud son of the Niger Delta, an agitator uh, to his report. He's no other person but ex made agitator and a member of the Niger Delta environmental and social political activist. I'm talking about no other person but Edmund Ebiwari Opori. The Nigerian president's personal negotiator, Timi Lebe, is on hand to watch the ceremony. We assure the federal government that there will be peace in our region if the following conditions are met. One, practical development of the region. After demanding that new jobs be created and electricity and roads provided, the rebels surrender their arms. What you have done today, I'm sure will send a signal to all other youths who are presently carrying arms and ammunition to see this as an example and disarm fortress. And it seems they have. By the end of the amnesty period, just a few days ago, all of the biggest rebel generals have agreed to disarm. Oh, welcome back to that beautiful interlude. You're welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. First and foremost, you're on the hot seat to talk Niger Delta development. Yeah. So, first, who is Edmond Ebiware Opori? Well, um, uh, um, from Akubede Delta State and also Sabagwea in Baesa State. Uh, I've been an agitator, I would say an ex-agitator, you know, for the betterment of the Niger Delta region. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, Edmund Ebiware is right here with us. Now, uh, let's go straight to, there is a 14 years long walk to freedom. You spent 14 years inside incarceration, fighting for the development of the Niger Delta, for the development of a Joe nation. Now you are out. God brought you out. How are you seeing the Niger Delta today? Are you satisfied? And when you look at the present people carrying the cross for the struggle and the movement, are they in the right tune with what you vision for? Um, I would say... I'm impressed. Okay. I'm impressed. In fact, what we worked for, we never worked in vain. Okay. I'm impressed with what I'm seeing. Okay. Audible. Most especially the the people in positions. Now. Yeah. The people in positions. The Niger Delta um, uh, Commission, the NDDC. What the NDDC? What is no? What is happening there is wonderful. Okay. In the amnesty program, do you play any role in the amnesty formation of this present amnesty program? What role did you play? Were you part and parcel of that struggle? Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, yeah. you know, we were, you know, we made people to understand why our era is volatile. Okay. At a point, we are agitating for. No, against marginalization. Okay. No, we want uh, the people, we want the world to know that we have been marginalized and there are certain things that are not going on well with us. We started this and we have been there and at the end we, we saw you know, the need for us to embrace peace because without peace development cannot, you know, cannot take place. So we decided to you know, embrace the amnesty. From 2007, we have been working. We worked tirelessly okay. to sensitize. And 2009, finally, the amnesty was proclaimed that we accepted the amnesty. If I may ask you, how would you describe the leader, Chief Ike Clark? 
Well, it, 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 it is near impossible to have somebody like that. Okay. We are blessed to have somebody like that. It's a blessing to the Niger Delta region, not just the Niger nation. It's a blessing to Nigeria. It's somebody that is so is sensitive to everything that is happening. Forget about his age. If you meet him, he will tell you where you came from. He will remember the the, the, the last time you met with him, just think about the man's age. It's a blessing to us. As people say that uh, the unity, the present unity of a John nation is in the hands of Ike Clark. Clearly, if Ike Clark is called by God tomorrow, yes. that a John nation can never be united. Do you believe that statement? Um, you know, because presently they said nobody can wear the shoes of Ike Clark unity of the Ijo and the Niger Delta presently. Yeah, they say leaders are born leaders. And I think he has not shot some persons okay. around him. Anytime you see Pa Ike Clark, you see people like Ambassador Bolade Gali around him yeah. and other leaders. So he's not showing. He has mentored people. So he's preparing the way for other people to succeed in. I believe we may not have a perfect replacement, but we'll have something similar to that. Okay. All right, I'll tell you that uh, we'll be talking with uh, ex med agitator and uh, Nigel Delta environmental social political activist, no other person but Edmold Ebiware Opori. That's right here on the odd seat talking peace and development of the Niger Delta, Nigerian nation, and with a special focus to the Ijo nation. During your incarceration, can you really tell us, who, were you guilty or you were frame rob? Because you were saying that there are some enemies that never wanted you to lead the train for the change phases of the Niger Delta. Um, going back to my incarceration, yes. you know, in life, in a struggle, uh, we have some bottlenecks and uh, we have some misunderstanding okay. because the boat is so large, the mansion is so large and there are so many people in there, different interest group. But our focus was how the amnesty will succeed. Some of our actions were misconstrued. Okay. You understand? This misconception, you know, caused a kind of... Um, a disaffection amongst us. Okay. And one way or the other, I was framed up. Okay. I was framed up. It is a frame up um, incident, okay. you know, that happened to me. But um, I've forgiven everybody okay. for the sake of Niger Delta unity. <laughs> yes, I've forgiven everybody. I say I feel it's a spiritual journey. Okay. It was a spiritual journey. And I've learned a lot. And what I've learned, where will I take it to? I will still come back to Niger Delta. Yes. Yeah, I am. And this is where I am. Look at what we are doing now. It's still the same Niger Delta issues. Uh, who is uh, uh, Charles Oka? Do you know the man? Were you in any way closer yeah. to him before? We met for the first time at the DSS uh, 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 facility. Okay. On the grand cell. We met. And we stayed together uh, at Kujie Prison. Okay. We spent about eight years together. So what are you saying yeah. that uh, you never knew Charles Oka until you, both of you met in the DSS cell? Yes, yes. Oh. Okay, yes. then how come you uh, become an accomplice to his crime? Oh, that, that, that is the frame up. <laughs> you understand? It is bizarre. Okay. That's the frame up. You understand? I've not met him before. Mm. We've not known at all. At all. We've not even spoken at all. We just met ourselves there. Uh, the lack of development of the Niger Delta, particularly to the Ijo people, whom do we blame? Is it the uh, federal government, the multinational? or the Ijo leaders or our Ijo youths? Uh, the blame should go to everyone. Okay. No species, you know, stage by stage. The multinationals first. Okay. Yeah. And the federal government, the divide and rule system of the federal government has really, not now, but it has improved. Okay. Though, you know, the divide and rule system of the federal government you know, gave us cause for concern. And we have to talk about our leaders also. Okay. Our leaders also, most of them don't have that nationalistic spirit at heart. Those people, you know, in position, places, people that are supposed to, you know, take 
this struggle along as they are you no know, they, they have positions in uh, government parastatals you no know, they were not really doing what we expect them to do so it is a kind of uh, a blame that we all is a collective one there's a saying that is the development of the Ijo people are in, in the Ijo people's hand so that is why i ask are we to dis blame federal or blame ourselves no, first and foremost, like you said, if we should blame everybody. We should blame everybody. But when you talk about the core development of yeah. our region, we have to blame ourselves. Okay. You cannot say somebody wants to come and develop your area, you don't give the person conducive environment, environment for the person to, to work. Yes. You know, this aspect of uh, you have to pay machine grant, you have to pay this, pay that, you know, it has really, it has not really helped matters. You know, that's where we, we do, that was why we said, let us accept this amnesty. Mm -hmm. Let us sensitize our youths. Make them understand we cannot develop this thing alone. There are professionals coming in. Allow these professionals to come in. Work in collaboration with them. So doing, things can work. Okay. So you see, we, we, on our own, opinion leaders, traditional leaders, youth leaders, we have to come together, work towards you know, like a collaboration, collaborate with the government for this thing to work out. Okay. Yeah. So what is your pain now uh, as a Niger Delta son? What is your pain, most especially to the development of the Icho nation? Do you have any pain? Yeah, let me tell you my pain. Okay. We need more resources. Okay. The 13% derivation is not, is, is, is not working. We need something more. Personally, I would prefer, I would say, we need 50%, 50 percent, least okay. what we have and the terrain we have. That 13 percent is going nowhere. It is very difficult for development to take place with what they are bringing in. You know, you know, 13 percent is not enough. So what I would say, what well, I'm not impressed with the resource. You know the, the, the derivation. But well, federal government is saying it. federal government is saying that uh, the governors of Niger Delta are yeah. the ones spending the resources for the development of Niger Delta in their own way, without spending it down to the major reason why the money are released. You did, don't you think the lack of development is the fault of the governors? It's not the fault of the government. The governors, not okay. We don't have enough money. Niger Delta, what is coming out from Niger Delta, you know, if, look at America. Places that produce oil, look at their derivation. They give to the center. Where if you go to Zamfara, people are, people, people are mining on their own. You understand? We, they are giving us. You don't need to do it that way. Give something appreciable. Though we should not hold our governors liable alone. Though, you no, know, there, there are some discrepancies you know, that happens, you understand, discrepancies yeah. and so But what is happening is clear. The derivation should be increased. And we'll see our governors performing better than they are doing right so, now. So what you're saying that there should be an increment, increment in the yeah. fund given yeah. to state. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me take you down to Amnesty again. Yes. Now, presently, we have a chief uh, doctor, Otwaro as a coordinator. So do, how do you see that man? No, that's why I said uh, I'm impressed with the appointment okay. because it's one of us. Okay. He knows everything about the struggle. He, there's nothing you would tell Dr. Otwaro about the struggle. He knows. So people like that is not just a politician. You know, so now it is square peg, square hole. Okay. That's what is happening. That's and I'm impressed, and I know he's going to deliver. And you believe he's going to deliver? I believe him, I believe him 100%. Okay. Believe. How would you describe the man, Tompolo, to the Niger Delta and the Ijaw Nation? Yes, uh, I think um, in every generation, yeah. leaders are born. He's the pride of Niger Delta, the Ijaw Nation. I, I, I want everybody, our leaders, to emulate that great man. Okay. He's somebody I want people to be developed. Self-empowerment is an advocate of it. That is the kind of leadership style he has, he has practiced. And people are benefiting from it. And you can see how there's peace everywhere. He has given the German 
a kind of um, identity. Identity. Respect. People respect us more because of his style. A man will be somewhere and gather his people culturally, you know, intellectuals, everybody coming together for one goal, for peace and development. And he's achieving it. And it is, it is rubbing on every one of us. And we appreciate him. What we talk about great gift to the Jordan Shore is Tempolo. Okay. It's a gift to the Jordan Shore. We should be proud of him. And I think in everywhere, there is a leader. God anoints people to become leader. With everything you have seen around him, he's a natural born leader. Were you a member of uh, IYC? Enjoy Youth Council? Uh, no, every Enjoy Youth is a member of IYC. <laughs> okay, every yeah, Enjoy yeah, Youth. Every enjoy youth okay. Yeah. So today, is IYC living up to its mandate in terms of develop, bringing development to Niger Delta and the Enjoy Nation? The pre predecessors of uh, From, this uh, present... Felis Twodolo to Felis the Twodolo present Jonathan. Till, uh, I, I, I think... Um, <laughs> Uh, the person at the mantle right now, uh, uh, Jonathan, mm. is a product of the struggle. Okay. That young man is working tirelessly. I've been with him. I've stayed with him, even in private. If I tell you things he's doing on his own to help our Niger Delta youths, it will amaze you. Personally, uh, he's a leader. He's somebody I respect so much. And he knows I love him and is going to deliver, and is delivering. Okay. You know, there was a, an issue in Aquaibom. The way he approached it, is somebody that responds to calls. Um, Lopobri, uh, Jonathan Lopobri responds to calls. He's tireless. He's moving from one end to the other. I've been with him, I've stayed with him, I've, I've observed him, you understand? He doesn't ignore calls. He listens to everybody's problem, Youths, different youths, without knowing who they are. That is the kind of leaders we need. I really appreciate him, and I think he's, he's performing. Even his, um, if we talk about youths, our youths are good. Okay. Yeah, our youths are good. Even his um, the predecessors, they were okay. They did well. They did so well. he's taking, you know, he has taken over them and doing. No, even better than what they were doing. So I really appreciate it. So to you so now, the IYC is carrying the cross? Yeah, it's carrying the cross. Very okay. Good, very good All cross, right. Yeah. Now let's go straight to another area. What do you think is the problem of the Ijo Nation? You know, the problem of Ijo Nation is... Yes. One, let us go back to the drawing board. Okay. Know how to communicate with our Ijo language. Okay. <laughs> Our dialects may be different, you understand? The, the word brings us together, this language. You know, let us try. Try and see how we'll be speaking our language first. Two is politics. This politics of a thing, some people are taking the politics before the jaw, uh, uh, the, 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 the nationality. ethnic nationality, which is not good. It all comes first before politics, before our different political parties. So if we say Ijo comes first and we are working towards the betterment of the Ijo nation, political issues should be secondary. Our primary aim is to see how Ijo unites and make progress. So let us put politics aside, sit down and discuss the Ijo, the Ijo ness in us. It's very important. So politics is the problem. Whoever that is there should know one thing, that is an Ijo man before any political party. Yes. That's it. If, we, if politics don't come to play, if we don't take politics as our priority, we take his job nation as our priority, things will be better. So whoever that is there, after political device and whatsoever, poli, poli, we, we have finished our elections and everything, let us work for the job nation. Forget about your different uh, party um, uh, uh, affiliation. So what you're saying now, yeah. major problem is our politicians, politics. Yeah. the political leaders yeah, yeah, of yeah. the Jaw Nation. Yes. And I, I pray that those people that understand the Jaw struggle should be elected. Okay. Yes. 
some people they are novice, they don't even know what is happening. They don't know where <laughs> how we go to this place. You know, our elders in the I INC. Um, in fact, the I I INC has not impressed us. Honestly. Okay. Yeah. They've not done. They have not done. Yeah. Done very well. Yeah, very well. Yeah. Okay. There are issues they are supposed to tackle. There are issues they are supposed to tackle. In fact, it's too. In, in fact, the I uh, INC is just docile. Which is not good. Which is not good. Yeah. All right, I'll tell you that I'll be discussing with Edmond Ebiware Opori, the ex med agitator and the Nigel Delta environmental social cultural activist on talking peace and development on the hot seat of the Nigel Delta chat room show. President Bola Hamed Tinubu, yeah. do you believe in that man restructuring and bringing development to the Nigel Delta? With the coastal. The, the, Lagos Calabar yeah, Coastal the, Highway. Yes, Highway. It's a good one. It's a good one. I think if we make this thing to come to reality, it will help us. And that shows he has a good intention for our people. And secondly, our son, the person that is there, Minister of Petroleum, uh, Senator Eniki Lopobre, is a is a brain. I'm happy that he's there. And I think uh, we need to give him time. He's going to perform. Okay. That's one person that will perform. Then there's one other appointment um, Mr. President did, um, Niger Delta River Basin Authority. Authority. Or Commission Authority. Angbari. Uh, Ebitimi Angbari, Honorable Ebitimi Angbari. That's somebody that has, it's a great personality. It's somebody that will deliver. So I think the appointments, to a great extent, Bola Tinibu will not come down to work for us. Yes. He has given the man to the he, he has given people to do these things. And the people he has appointed, they are people with integrity. And I believe these people will deliver. So if you are with yeah. Bola Tinibu to make a request for yeah. a project in your data, what would that project be? The project that we ask for. Just give us road road. Road. Yeah. Okay. Link us up for business to flow. Let there be road in the interland everywhere. Let there be road everywhere. Open with road, we can meet up every business, you no know, deals, and all the rest. That's what we need more. We need. So it's very uh, difficult for those people yes. to work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll uh, tell you that uh, we're still talking peace and development. All right. Here with uh, the ex med agitator and the Nigel Delta environmental social political activist. Edmond Ebiware Opori is still right here on the hot seat of a Niger Delta chat room talking peace and development of our Niger Delta. People say that uh, the black gold, instead of being a blessing to the Niger Delta, is now seem like a cause. So how do you say the black gold, uh, crude oil? Yeah. Is it a cause or a blessing? Something is a gift from God. It's a blessing. The way and manner we manage it okay. can become a cause at some point. But it's a blessing when you put everything together. Because people say that yeah. areas where there is no resources like crude oil are yeah. far more developed than our areas with the crude oil. Whereas the Ijon Nation, the Niger Delta, is a feeding bottle of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That the problem is our own leaders and our people using it against ourselves. We we'll still go back to that aspect of derivation. Okay. You cannot be taking hundred percent of what we have and giving us thirteen percent. Now look at it. It's just unfair. No. Sometimes we fight each other. We are not our problem. The problem is for somewhere else. Yeah. We don't have enough. We don't have enough to reach everywhere. You go to a place where they produce oil. You cannot see water. You cannot see pipe bone water. You cannot see light. No, all this uh, uh, interventionary um, uh, 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 institutions, they are trying, they are making, you know, trying to make sure that things are done properly. But you see, what have they given to them? How can they reach out to everybody? How can the terrain is very difficult? So you cannot compare our terrain, our, our situation with other places. It's very difficult to build a house in, in Niger Delta. So what you are, if you are spending, a, a, a one million uh, outside in Niger, they spent ten million. So what is coming in? So people should stop comparing <laughs> our leaders with other leaders. Okay. Yes.
To a great extent, if you have not been there, you will not understand. I'm not here, I'm a blunt person. I will say it as it is. You understand? But so far, with what I have experienced, I've gone around, I've you know at least in my the situation I've passed through, I've seen different people. We have leaders, we are trying. We should encourage Adakaboro. Them. Yeah. Let's go to Adakaboro. Yeah. The man that initiated the struggle for the Niger Delta. Are you satisfied with the way he's being celebrated today? Definitely I'm satisfied, but I still believe okay. the celebration should, should, should also that. go to some... There, there are some persons also that were there even before our great Adakabu. We have King Koko. Okay. Yeah, King Koko should be celebrated too. He fought for the Niger Delta, he fought for the juries. It should be remembered. Pre-colonial times, it should be remembered also. Okay. Yes, at the Kaburu, the, the, the ideology of the, at the Kaburu the, is very good. It, you know, it, it, it awakens us, which is good. You know? But let us also spread it to other fallen heroes, heroes. too. Yeah. OK. Uh, what word do you have for the Ijo youth? For the Ijo youth? Yes. First and foremost, I want us to be communicating with the Ijo language. Okay. It's very, very important. The Ijo language is our, our identity. We should identify ourselves with the language. Then, anywhere you see your brother, you see your sister, always identify with him or her. There's nothing more than relationship. If you are in problem, then you will understand what I'm saying. But you don't need to be a problem before you get this thing. Yeah, okay. Let us unite. Let us unite. See each other as brothers. It's very, very important. If we are not united, we cannot really fight for a cause. So you agree that the jaws are not united? We are not united. Okay. We are not Let's look straight to my camera to the Ijo nation. I do. Um, I want to say we need ourselves. We need each other. We need each other. It's very, very important. Let us be our brother's keeper. Let us stop causing disaffection amongst our leaders because of your little gains, temporary relief. You try to you know, hit heads together. It will not go well. Don't break up relationships. It's very, very important to our unity. If our leaders are not united, it will be difficult for we, the followers. Forget about our political difference. Once it comes to development of the Ijo nation, let us come together. It's very, very important. Unity is the key and peace. Stay safe. All right, uh, thank you very much uh, for being on the hot seat today. Headmore Ebuare Opori for being on the hot seat, talking peace and development on the Niger Delta Shuttle. All right, that has been the show this week. Next week, do keep a date. Our guest will be on the hot seat to talk peace and development of the Niger Delta and the Ijo Nation at large. Remember, the Ijo Nation is the feeding bottle of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I'm Michel Dao Bimenetam Sokombrin. Bye-bye and do have a pleasant rest.